So I'm going to go through the tangent and cotangent practice sheet, how you can go about making these graphs. Talk some strategies. So we're supposed to find out all this information about this graph. First thing we should identify is it has a vertical shift up 4. And there's no horizontal shift. Then, because we know it's tangent, you should know that tangent starts on the midline. And that normally it would go up, but because there's a negative here, it's actually going to go downward. The next most important thing we have to find is going to be where are the asymptotes going to be and where are the other points going to be on this graph. So the key thing you have to know for tangent is that it has this relationship between pi and its b value. If you take pi divided by b, it'll give you the period. In this equation, it's a little hard to see what b is, but if I had a 1 right here, hopefully you'll recognize this is really negative 2 tangent of 1 half x plus 4. So I brought out the 1 half out in front so we could see what b is. So our period is going to be pi divided by that b value, and you should know that pi over a half is 2 pi. So we can put that in our chart. And what that tells us is if you go 2 pi away, you get a point. 2 pi the other way, we get a point. What you should also know is that the asymptotes are halfway between these points. And now we're in pretty good shape. If we want to use this value here of 2, that'll tell you if you go downward 2 and then halfway to the asymptote, you'll get a point. And if you went up, to and halfway the asymptote, you get another point. So, sorry this went off the graph a little bit, but your S will look something like that. And if we wanted to add the rest of it, we could also have a graph going like this and like this as well. So there's our sketch of tangent. Uh, the domain we're going to say is all real numbers except we're going to throw out values that occur at the asymptotes. So the easiest way to do that is to find one asymptote. Here I have one at negative pi. And if I want to find another asymptote, you should notice that this distance is 2 pi apart. So it's going to be plus 2 pi k. The range for tangent and cotangent is always all real numbers. The good thing about asymptotes, uh, once you know the domain, is it's really just going to be x equals these values that we excluded. So if you've got the domain down, the asymptotes are x equals those excluded values. Remember, it's x equals because they are vertical lines. The vertical shift we know is up 4 already, which means the midline is at y equals 4. Notice, once again, it is an equation. So let's do the same thing for the next problem. We actually don't need to come up with the equation. We just need to look at the information given. So it looks to me like there are asymptotes at like 0, pi over 2, pi, etc. So we would say the domain is all real numbers except one of the asymptote locations plus the distance between asymptotes, which is pi over 2. So plus pi over 2, k. The range, once again, is all real numbers. The asymptotes are at x equals 0 plus pi over 2, k, but I will reduce that to just pi over 2, k. The period, well, that's just how far apart the asymptotes are. That's how long it takes to repeat, so that's pi over 2. Um, the vertical shift can be a little bit tricky, but if you look at the graph, it appears to me that the bend is around here. So I'm going to say the vertical shift appears to be right there at about um, up 1. Because the graph goes down like that, whoop, and then like that. There's sort of a bend in the graph at y equals 1. And that's our midline. Now, uh, graph 3 didn't print for me for some reason, so I won't be able to do number 3. I think there is an equation here. If I can find it in a minute, I'll come back to it. Uh, for number 4, it says, which of the following functions has a period of 2 pi and a vertical shift of up 2? So if it has a period of 2 pi, that means that if you do pi over b for each of these because they're tangents, you would have to get 2 pi. So we could go through and solve them all individually if we want to. So here the b value is 1, so pi over 1 is pi. So that's not right. For uh, b, once again, b is 1, so that means the period is also pi, which isn't right. 
So it's really down to these two. And they both have x over 2 here, which means the b is a half. So we would do pi over a half. And once again, as we saw in the first problem, we get 2 pi. Both of these have the right period, but only one of them has the vertical shift up of 2, so that's answer C. For 5, which of the following describes the horizontal shift of the function? So what you need to remember is to find the horizontal shift, you need to factor the inside. So if I factor this function inside, I'd have to pull out the 2, which means I'd have to pull out a 2 from the pi, which means I'm dividing it by 2. So that tells us I have a horizontal shift of pi over 2 to the left. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and go to the next page. I'll try to come back to 3 later. So here are the problems that we're going to try to graph about tangent and cotangent. So we're given y equals tangent of x minus 2. So it's important to know that we have a vertical shift down 2 and no horizontal shift. We should know that tangent starts on the midline. And because the b value here is 1, we know the period must be pi. So if we go pi away, we'll be getting more points on the tangent curve. We also should know that the asymptotes are halfway between those points. And then because tangent tends to go upward, and the a value is 1, we're going to go up 1, halfway to the asymptote, down 1, halfway to the asymptote, and that'll give me 1 of the s's. And we could draw more of them. They all will look the same. All right, so there's tangent of x minus 2. Uh, now let's do this negative cotangent graph. We know there's no vertical shift, but there is a horizontal shift, pi over 2 to the right. So right here, I'm going to mark that that's our shift, but I'm not going to draw a dashed line because that you might think is an asymptote. Which, actually, I'm now going to make an asymptote because if you remember, cotangent starts with an asymptote. Now, the period of this graph is going to be pi as well because b is 1. So every pi away, we're going to have another asymptote. And what we should know is in between the asymptotes on the midline, we're going to have points. Now this says a negative cotangent graph. So that means that we're going to be going down, uh, upward. Sorry, cotangent normally goes downward. This is a negative cotangent, so it'll go upward. So the a value is 1 here, the absolute value of it. So we go up 1, down 1, and then that will be one of our s's. And then we can make more. All right, number three, we've got y equals tangent 2x. So we don't have a vertical shift, we don't have a horizontal shift. Oh, this won't be too bad. So we know that tangent starts on the midline. Now we need to find the period. Pi over b gives us the period, and because b is 2, we know our period is pi over 2. So that means every pi over 2, we're going to get one of these marks. And then halfway between, we're going to get the asymptotes. Yes, there are a lot of asymptotes to draw. So if you're worried about in a quiz having to draw all this out, hopefully the directions will say something like, you only have to draw one period. And that's what I'll do here. We know that tangent goes upward. We're going to go up one, halfway the asymptote, down one, halfway the asymptote, and we get our S. And so I'll just draw two of them. You are more than welcome to draw more periods. All right, here is number four. So same thing, we need to look at our shifts. There's no vertical shift. There is a horizontal shift, but this one's tricky. Remember, there's a one here in front of the x. So we should rewrite this as negative two tangent. If I pull out the one half, that leaves us with x plus, and we need to figure out what this plus is. So think about it. one half times what would give you pi? The answer to that is 2 pi, because we've really divided this pi by a half. 
which tells us that now we have a horizontal shift of 2 pi to the left. So this is where our graph is going to start at. And notice that I didn't make it a vertical line here because I was a little worried if there's going to be an asymptote here or not. Because it's a tangent graph, it's not an asymptote, it's going to be a point. Now we need to figure out what the period is. The period is pi over b, so our period is 2 pi. So every 2 pi, I'm going to get another one of these dots. We know the asymptotes are in the middle. Because it's a tangent graph, it would normally go up. It's negative, so we're going to go downward. So down to halfway the asymptote, down to halfway, up to halfway, and then finish it off. We will get a curve that looks like this. All right, number five. We've got tangent pi over four plus one. Ooh, that looks like a mistake. I'm gonna put an x. Uh, you know what? I'm not sure what's supposed to happen for that one. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna put an x here. That one looks much better with an x in it. So now we're gonna to try to figure out what the graph of this should be. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna first notice there's a vertical shift up one. And there's no horizontal shift. We know tangent starts right on the midline. Next, we need to find the period. The period is always pi over the b value. So in this case, we're going to end up with pi times 4 over pi, the reciprocal, which if I'm counting right, that gives us 4 pi over pi, or yeah, 4 pi over pi, which when they cancel out, gives us 4. Now, our scale normally had been going by pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. So I'm going to change these to 1, 2, 3, 4. Because I know the period is 4, so I'm going to repeat all the way over here and repeat all the way over there with asymptotes right in the middle of those two points. Then we also know that tangent goes upward. So from here, we should go up 1, because that's our amplitude, and then halfway to the asymptote. So same thing over here, same thing over here, and we get our graph. All right, number six, y equals four cotangent, two x minus three pi. All right, so we know that this does not have a vertical shift, but it does have a horizontal shift, and we need to figure that out by factoring out the two that's on the inside. So if you divide this 3 pi by 2, you get 3 pi over 2. It's now in factored form. The horizontal shift is 3 pi over 2 to the right. So we're going to start there. But I'm not going to make it an asymptote because I'm worried that maybe there's not an asymptote here. Oh, but wait, there is. It's cotangent. Cotangent starts with an asymptote. OK, next thing we need to decide is what's the period. The period here is always going to be pi over b. So pi over 2 is our period which means we have asymptotes at each of these tick marks, pi over 2 away. And I could keep going, but to make our life a little bit less easy, I'll just do the right side of the graph. And I'll do two periods. I know that halfway between these asymptotes are going to be these key points. It's cotangent, so it's a graph that goes downward. Because there's a 4 there, it actually would go all the way up here and then all the way down there. So it's a very tall and skinny graph. So once again, up four, halfway, down four, halfway. We get a graph that looks like that. A very tall and skinny cotangent graph. All right, let's look at number seven. So we've got y equals three tangent x plus pi minus one. And we're going to go ahead and make the graph of it. So we know that it has a vertical shift down 1. And it has a horizontal shift of pi to the left. So that's going to be right here. Oops, and I broke my cardinal rule here. I didn't want to make that an asymptote right away because I wasn't sure if it should be one. And in fact, for this one, because it's a tangent, we are not going to put an asymptote there. Right here, that starting point, we're going to have a dot. Next, we need to know the period. The b value is 1, so that means that every pi, we're going to have a point on this graph. And we should know halfway between those points, we're going to have an asymptote. So 
For a tangent graph, we know they go upward. So we're going to go from this point up one, two, three, one, two, three, halfway the asymptote. One, two, three, halfway, one, two, three, halfway, and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Okay. And then we get a graph that looks something like that. All right. Now for number eight, we've got y equals negative cotangent of x plus two. We know that the vertical shift is up two, so we're gonna have this as our midline. There's no horizontal shift, so we're gonna start right here on the y-axis, and because it's cotangent, this is gonna be an asymptote. The b value is one, so that means that all our asymptotes are pi away from each other. And we also know that our middle points are all going to be halfway between the asymptotes. Cotangent normally goes downward, but because it's a negative cotangent, it's going to go upward, and it's going to go up by two, halfway to the asymptote. And now we just play connect the dots. And then number nine, y equals cotangent one-half x minus two. Once again, we have a vertical shift of down two with no horizontal shift, so we're starting here on the y-axis. Because it's cotangent, we have an asymptote right there. And then we need to find the period. The period is going to be pi over b, which is two pi. So that means we're going to have an asymptote two pi away and then 2 pi away the other way. Halfway between, we're going to have points. Because it's cotangent, our graph is going to be tending downward. So it's going to look something like this. Notice that I went a distance of 1 up and down from the midline because the a value there was 1. All right, I'm going to stop this video here, and then I will finish up the rest of the review in the next video.